Welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries and this is a video inspired by Rune Slingers, Cameras, Chapters and Dice. Oh my video. And I'll put a link to that down below. It's not really so much of a video response but Rune Slingers video did make me think about how restricting ourselves to one type of gaming, whether it be theatrical, cinematic or simulationist or whatever, often means closing ourselves off from other styles. Now, I'm sure most people who've seen my videos and who know me through the Brigade will know that I'm a mad lover of this system here, the Fate system, and also the Dungeon World system. But that wasn't always the case. I actually started role-playing mainly with World of Darkness games from White Wolf. I'm going to talk about them a fair bit in this video. Not because there's any problem with these games, but just because that's where I've got most experience. In his video, Runeslinger says that as we advance new techniques and methods for role-playing, that we should be careful not to lose touch with older games that may not make the same assumptions or may make entirely different assumptions that we make in modern games. And he gives the example of someone struggling with an older game because they had a question that the original makers would not have conceived to answer, the hobby being very different when the game was released. I've also noticed this myself, how game systems have changed even since when I first started playing them, which considering I was born in 1980 would have been about 1994, 1995. One of the first games I played was Vampire the Masquerade from White Dwarf. This second edition Vampire the Masquerade book is one of the first books, if not the first, that I purchased and I still have it. Now later on I moved on to the probably more familiar third edition of Vampire the Masquerade. And for those of you who aren't aware, Vampire the Masquerade uses a dice pool mechanic where you basically roll a number of d10s and all the dice above a certain number count as a success. There are a few little extra wrinkles in there, but that's basically it. You need a number of successes to succeed in a task. In about 2004, when Vampire the Requiem came out, I was still very much a World of Darkness player with very little love for other systems. I suppose that I'd let myself get locked into that if it ain't broke don't fix it mentality. Now Requiem used the same rule systems as Masquerade and the earlier Old World of Darkness games, but updated and incorporating a few new ideas and concepts. I'd say that at least 95% of the games I ran in my teens and in my 20s were World of Darkness games. We'd pretty much finish a campaign, we'd have a few weeks break, and then myself and my friends will be cracking open another World of Darkness book, perhaps Mage, maybe Werewolf, although Vampire was the perennial favourite because, let's face it, vampires are and always have been pretty cool, but at least in my opinion, and we'd be starting a new campaign. A few years ago, sorry I forget exactly when, I got a bit burnt out with running games. Most games I ran seemed to be just like repeats of earlier efforts, and there's a minimal amount of role players in the small town where I live and I've pretty much gamed with all of them. To try and reinvigorate my love of the hobby, I started looking outside the grim modern day horror of the World of Darkness, which had always been my home. Aside from a couple of other games which I played like D&D and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. This isn't to say there's anything wrong with World of Darkness, I've still got a great deal of fondness for it. I just wanted to try something different at the time. And this led to me investigating the independently published games at my friendly local gaming store, Spirit Games, and was also when I started to become aware of RPGs available in PDF format from DriveThru. And it's also about when I started to realise that you could actually roleplay online with people, assuming you had a decent internet connection and the appropriate kit. Couple this with increased stresses at work and more responsibilities in real life and it seems only natural that I eventually found myself favouring more narrative games and those that were quicker to play and required less investment of time to learn the rules and run the game. Again, not to say that there is anything wrong with Fate or what I consider to be more modern games. I've got a number of them sat here. There's obviously my Fate core book my Fate Accelerated book, my 
Grunge and War book and Jade Punk, which I'm actually running at the minute and very much enjoying. Although, my copy of the Fate Core book has a copyright date of 2013 in it, so they've actually been out for a little while, and even longer in other incarnations. However, I really noticed how divorced I've become from once familiar game systems when I recently decided that I'd like to run a Vampire the Requiem campaign online. And yes, yes, I know, before you say anything, I'm moaning on one hand about not having enough time while simultaneously trying to cram another campaign into my life. Call it the curse of the role player. What are you going to do? Well, I bought a copy of Blood and Smoke, the Strix Chronicles, which is the latest rules revision of Vampire the Requiem, although I believe it's since been released as Requiem 2nd Edition. I enjoyed reading it and I reviewed it on my channel. You can click on the thumbnail there to see the original review. However, when I actually started trying to read the rules with a view to storytelling or GMing a game of Requiem, I found it an oddly jarring experience. There was nothing wrong with the rules. In fact, they seemed a marked improvement on the old Masquerade rules. However, they just seemed odd and I couldn't work out why certain things had been done in a particular way. It was as I was reading through a passage that actually did make sense and that I actually liked that I realised what the problem was. The bits that seemed to make sense to me were those parts of the game that were more reminiscent of Fate and the games that I tend to play a lot now. And just to give you one example, if you use the discipline of all specs, which is effectively heightening senses and reading spiritual impressions in Requiem, one of the powers allows a character to examine a scene and depending on how good their role is, they get to ask a number of questions to the GM, such as who was the last person who was here and things like that, allowing you to find out information about the scene. And this is very reminiscent of a number of mechanics that are present in Dungeon World, a game I very much enjoy and that I've run recently. The bits that were more difficult for me to get my head around were those rules that were more similar to the original rules from Masquerade. Again, it's not that there's anything wrong with those rules, it's just that I'd got used to doing things a little differently and I'd forgotten how those games used to run. Now, I'm still planning on running a Requiem game. However, I'm now having to read through the Blood and Smoke rulebook fairly slowly in an attempt to reacquaint myself with those rule sets and the assumptions made within that game. Part of me does wonder whether it would have been quite so difficult if I'd continued running the Odd World of Darkness game over the course of the last few years. So, I suppose the point of this video is that even games you were once familiar with can become difficult to understand and almost alien, but only if you let them do so, like I did myself with the World of Darkness. If I had to give you a piece of advice, I'd say that if you've got a system that you used to enjoy running, sitting, gathering dust on your shelves, take it down, run it, show it some love, and you may dis rediscover something that you really enjoy. It will keep you in touch with those game mechanics and ways of thinking that you might otherwise forget. And also you can apply things you have learned in other games back to these old games and vice versa. You may find something in your older games that you can take forward into your newer games. So I hope if you've enjoyed this video, you'll consider clicking on like and clicking on the red dice up there in the corner to subscribe to my channel. As always, if you have any comments, please put them in the box down below or hit me up in the Google Plus links. I really do enjoy reading what you write. Until I see you in the next video, take care and happy gaming.